Hi and welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. It's my September Q&A and you guys have asked me some absolutely brilliant questions which I can't wait to share with you. So before we dive into them, please remember to hit the subscribe button and to ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos. So the first question is how to stay calm when your child is stressed out, ill, scared and you are too. I think the most important thing is to not show your children that you are panicking and you are stressed because it just makes the situation escalate and get out of control. So just keep calm. So I keep calm either by counting to 10 or just remembering to breathe. And I literally breathe in and breathe out and I really try and calm my breath and just take a moment because there is no point immediately exploding into panic or whatever it is just take that moment, stop, pause, assess the situation and work out then what is the best way to do it. If you are show, if you are really stressed, it just makes the situation a lot worse. It makes the children really scared and often a situation is far less stressful than it first looks. They were like a head injury. They bleed really badly. Gus got bitten by a dog once. That was really alarming and I just calmly picked him up reassured him, calmed him down and actually in calming them down, you calm yourself down as well. Take a moment and then decide whether it's 999 or what, what you need to do, but just count to 10, breathe, stay calm and then address the situation. The next question is, did you go to university? Yes, I did, but I didn't complete the course. I was actually doing a fashion degree it was a very difficult stage in my life. My parents separated when I was, well, Easter holidays before my GCSEs, and it wasn't an amicable separation. It was very, very traumatic for all of us. And so that did affect my GCSEs, my A-levels, and my university, actually, because it went on for quite a long period of time. Fashion was something I was always really passionate about. Um, and I went and I did a course started a course and I really, really hated it. It was not a great experience for me. In hindsight, I actually would have loved to have gone down the medical route, which um, I've never talked to anyone about, but I was thinking about how to answer this question and actually I would have loved to have trained to be a doctor and gone down the sort of natural health, natural remedies, natural ways of healing, but with a medical background. That would have been, I think, my dream career, looking back in hindsight. But things happen for a reason. I did all sorts of really, really exciting things, having left my fashion degree, and I wouldn't have met Simon if, if I hadn't have taken that path. So I'm very happy the way things have turned out, but with hindsight, I would have done that and university isn't for everybody it wasn't for me doing that course um, I felt like a duck out of water everybody was cool and trendy and as me with my pearls I've worn them all my life and I just didn't fit in and was out of my comfort zone and I think because things were quite traumatic at home that just was not a good combination Okay, so quite a different question now. How on earth do you keep a children's playroom tidy and more importantly, how do you prevent the spread of little bits of toys throughout the house whilst keeping all those little plastic bits and bobs in the sets that they were meant to be in? Surely there is some way to rally the tiny troops to assist with this. Yes, there is a way. Tidy time. So at the end of the day, when mine were little, it was before tea time. So maybe at half past four, we would have tidy time and then they'd sit down and eat. Or afterwards, whatever fits in with your routine. But tidy time at the end of the day is really, really important. So they learn that they have to look after their toys and they have to put them away. Also, limit the amount of toys that you have in their playroom. So whether that's putting things in a box and putting them away and rotating toys and just having a small amount out because if there's a huge amount of toys, they become overwhelmed. They don't play with them properly and chaos, chaos happens. So limit the amount of toys. I use storage baskets inside a cupboard. So I don't have everything out on display. They have to kind of open cupboards, pull out a basket, make sure that everything has a home and get them to look after their things. And it does work and it does help. So tidy time at the end of the day, I found really, really successful. 
Do you have another oven apart from your Arga? Yes, we do. We have got an Arga with a module on the side which is electric and it's separate but it works as a normal oven. I actually don't love it. In hindsight, I would have probably put in a Neff oven or a different electric oven away from the Arga and have that as a separate thing. And if I was to ever change the kitchen here, which probably won't happen because everything else works really well, I would have put a separate oven in. I think if you live in a home with an Arga, they can get really hot in the summer. Sometimes they don't work, very rarely they don't work, so you need backup. I obviously do a lot of cooking and a lot of catering, so an additional oven is pretty essential, but I don't love the way that oven cooks, but I love my Olga, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Smart watches, what are your thoughts and always being connected to the internet? Well, I used to have a Fitbit. In fact, I've still got a Fitbit. I used to wear it all the time and religiously. And I found I was getting really competitive with myself and really pushing myself. I wanted to meet those steps every day. I wanted to get my heart rate higher than the workout I had done before, etc., etc. And I was competing with like the previous week or the previous day. I was trying to get my steps in and actually some days, just don't need to push yourself so much. I also didn't like the fact that it was always buzzing on my wrist. Just felt like it probably is not great for our bodies having that thing attached to you constantly buzzing. So I have ditched mine and actually I'm much calmer, much happier. I know if my heart rate's got high on a workout because it has. I think if I was going to go down the route again, I would go for a waterproof apple that you don't have to take off. Um, for swimming and showering, things like that. But actually, my life's happier with less tech, I have decided. So, um, although I have had it and I loved it, I'm not a fan at the moment, but I'm not saying I won't go back to it at some point. But at the moment, I'm loving my Swatch Watch, actually. Really simple and easy. What advice would you give to a mother who has always been ambitious at her career but is transitioning into staying at home and being a traditional wife once the baby is born? This is a really big question and I could talk about this for a long time so I'm going to keep it short and concise but happy to expand on it at a later date. Um, I had always wanted to have children but I did have a great career and a great job in London when I married Simon and um, we moved to the country and it was sort of a natural break to leave leave the job and have the baby. I couldn't and didn't want to be commuting. I think there's a lot of stigma attached to being a traditional wife and this isn't something I've talked about on camera before but it is something that I'm very passionate about. I think bringing up your own children is really important. You know you can pay for nurseries and pretty much well a lot of what you earn goes into that. But actually you can have a calmer life and look up, we're running a house, cleaning it. If you've got animals, that's pretty full time too. And being a mother is full on. It is a job in itself and people forget that. You can pay somebody else. You can send them out to nursery, you can get a cleaner in, you can get all this additional help and carry on working. And that for some people works brilliantly. But I think just go with the flow and don't overthink it. I think if you've been ambitious and you are worried that you're not testing your brain or whatever, have a side hustle. I do. I was at a stage where I needed something for me, not just the children. And I think a lot of um, traditional housewives feel like that. My mother did a lot of charity work in the early days when we were little. She did all sorts of things. She was passionate about the garden. And I think um, enjoy it would be my advice. And if you are missing that um, buzz from a career, then branch out, think of something, get creative, and enjoy taking your time while your children are little because they grow up so quickly and they start school so quickly. Those first four years whiz past in absolute flash. They don't feel like it at the time when you're in the moment, but looking back, they absolutely do. So enjoy it.
Okay, this is another quite a big question. Do you have a house file, light bulb inventory, duvet cleaning rotor, etc.? Nowadays, it's too time consuming and what do you do in the place of this? Well, one of the things that I do, which I don't talk about often uh, on here with you guys, but I write housekeeper's manuals for people and a lot of these things um, that I've been asked about, sort of light bulb inventory, duvet cleanings, all of that is in that housekeeper's manual. If you have a large home then and you want it to run like clockwork, then a manual is pretty essential. If you have a smaller home and you know you and you can manage, then you don't need it. But obviously, like I have a cupboard for light bulbs and they are divided into sections. So I can see, oh yeah, we're running low on those, I need to get more. So I don't need an inventory for our home for those light bulbs, but I have them nicely organized you could put them in a box and just see and then when you're running low on things i have a list on the fridge and i write it down things like duvets at the end of the season so at the end of the summer summer duvets go to the dry cleaners and the winter duvets go um as, spr as spring rise to be clean so they're done twice a year and i know i know that and i have I have my cleaning schedule that I use here, but I do have the housekeeper's manuals that I do for other people. So it is helpful to have something and to have maybe, you know, a diary note of the things that you need to do throughout the year, like chimneys always, always swept um, at the end of August, early September and things like that. So I hope that helps answer that question. Ironing bed sheets, super king and how to fold fitted sheets. I've got lots of YouTube videos on sheets folding fitted sheets is my thing so please I'll put the link in here please go and look at those videos because I have done lots of in detail also how to wash your sheets and hang them out to save on ironing as well so hopefully those videos will be really useful for you I've been asked this question a few times how to keep towels fluffy and gorgeous without using the tumble dryer guys I'm sorry I don't know of another option I put them in the tumble dryer while they are soaking wet. So they go in um, for a quick blitz and then I hang them out. Some people partly dry them and then fluff them up at the end. It's personal preference, but the tumble dryer is the only way I have found for towels to be soft and fluffy. And I think there is nothing worse than having a really hard, horrid, crusty towel to dry yourself with. So that is one luxury that I don't scrimp on. They do go in the tumble dryer and I'm sorry that I have not discovered another alternative. If anyone knows of one, please share it with us. Any laundry tips on keeping whites bright? Mine seem to fade. Ideally, how to revive towels and sheets that have gone grey. Okay, if they've gone grey, baking soda, white vinegar and lemon juice can help bring them back to life. But my best bit of advice is just wash your whites with your whites. Please don't put whites in with any other colours, not even with greys. Whites, light colours, pinks, darks, that's how I do it. Even if something has got, like a sweatshirt has got white with blue arms, that goes not with the whites, keep them separate and then your whites will be sparkling forever. I promise it works and you won't have the problem of a grey bra or whatever it is. So just keep them separate. How do you tackle bins indoors and out? Okay, I tackle bins by using a really decent bin liner, one that doesn't rip. So um, a thick, sturdy one and then nothing leaks and then you don't have a problem. Tie it really tightly at the top. When you put them out in your wheelie bin, put them upright so that things can't leak. Put them all upright, nothing leaks, and then you actually don't have to clean them very often at all. I do probably once a month use some Zaflora in diluted water, rubber gloves on and um, give it a good wipe out, wash out, swill out, rinse it. Make sure that your bin is completely dry before you put um, a bin bag in if you've washed it out. But good thick bin bags, bin liners, 
and stand upright in the wheelie bin and you shouldn't have the problem. Hope that helps. Okay, this is a question about eggs. How do you know if an egg is fresh and should you keep them in the fridge or not? Okay, bad eggs float in cold water. Good eggs sink to the bottom and turn on their sides. So that's the easiest way to test whether they are all right or not. I tend not to keep eggs in the fridge. However, if I've got an excess of eggs, then I, then I obviously keep the excess in. But I'm using eggs the whole time and I like to use them from room temperature. So if I'm making meringues, if I'm baking a cake, if I, um, yeah, whatever I'm doing with eggs, they should be used from room temperature. If they've been in the fridge and you then leave them out, you should only leave them out for two hours um, before using them, or if you've left them out for longer, then actually you need to throw them away. They shouldn't be changing temperature the whole time. Also, a lot of people don't know this, don't wash your eggs. So if you have your own chickens, do not wash the eggs because it makes the shell permeable. So things can, germs can then go in, not permeable, porous, that is the word, sorry. It makes the shell porous, things can get in, and that's when eggs can go bad um, and risk of infection things. So even if they've got, you know, chicken shit on, don't wash it off, you know, maybe just scrape it off, but they are much better, well, it is crucial not to wash them. So that is my egg advice for you. Best garden plants for bees. Right, hellebores, honeysuckle, comfrey, foxgloves, bluebells, apple blossom and wild cherries are what bees really, really love and thrive on in your garden. So get planting those things. Which flowers are edible? Love this question. Roses, nasturtium, struggle with that word, calendula, borage, cornflowers, lavenders, pansies, violas and fennel. How to remove red wine stains? Well, okay. One tablespoon of washing up liquid, one tablespoon of white wine vinegar, 500 mils of lukewarm water, in a jug, mix it all together, and then using a white cloth. You don't want a cloth that's the color's gonna run out because that just adds to the chaos. So one of my white Spontex cloths would work perfectly for this. Um, pour a little, little bit of the solution on. It obviously depends how much red wine. If it's a tiny amount, then use a Spontex cloth. If not, I would use um, an old white towel. And pour the solution on, dab it. Pour the solution on, dab it on another bit of the towel or cloth until it's all lifted and lifted up and absorbed and that should do the trick obviously it depends what it's been spilt onto but that one normally works really well favorite music concert you have ever been to okay i've been to quite a few concerts but i think the one that sticks in my mind the most is the first concert i ever went to with Sai. it was a complete and utter surprise he took me to dublin for the weekend and we went to see the Eagles in, I'm sure it's called, I want to call it Lansdowne Crescent, but it's not. Lansdowne, whatever it is, which is no longer there, but gosh, it was the most awesome, awesome, incredible night. I think that was my best. I've seen the Rolling Stones a few times. And then I think my most recent one that I've been to was seeing Chic with Niles Rogers in Brighton with the children. And that was their first ever kind of, music concert. Sai is a big, big music, I don't know what the word is, but he loves the concert, he loves loud music. He frog marched the children and I, kept running behind, to the front. He literally took us right to the front, but it was too loud for the children so we had to come back a bit. He likes to be in there, in the thick of it, stuck in with the kids and so chic in Brighton was a pretty awesome experience with the children. Love that question, thank you. If you could live anywhere else in the world, where would it be and why? Now I have thought about this quite a lot and I'm struggling. I am very, very happy here in England. I love the seasons. I don't think I could live anywhere else in the world full time. I love America. I could possibly live in New England 
I love Boston. I love sort of Cape Cod, Nantucket, that area I really, really love and I really get. I think because it's probably quite similar to here. I also love Canada, but I love home and I love it here. I also love Scotland, that's quite um, different, but I don't think I could live up there all year round. So I think I'm very happy here. I tried to not give too much thought to this and just go with the people that first came to my mind. So if you could have anyone in the world, living or past, who would you invite to your ultimate dinner party? Okay, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, Audrey Hepburn, Coco Chanel, Bridget Bardot, and the Queen. I was trying to think of a sexy hunk, but actually there wasn't one that I could think of that I wanted to come, so I'm going with that list. What is the one thing you cannot leave the house without? Well, my handbag, because then it's got all my essentials in. My handbag comes everywhere with me. My mother was the same, my grandmother was the same. We love our handbags. So our final question is, oysters fascinate me, but I can never bring myself to eat one. Do you have any tips? Yes, I have got lots of tips and I'm going to end with a little bit of a story. So I had eaten oysters before this story that I'm gonna tell you. I had tried, do you know, I think the first one was on the school French trip when I was 12, 13. Tried maybe them again, but not, not a huge fan. I also was the world's fussiest eater. I didn't even try mayonnaise until I met Sai. I did in my late teens, early 20s, get slightly more adventurous because I didn't want to look like a complete blonker when I was at people's houses for not eating anything or trying anything. But I went out for dinner with a boyfriend, pre-Simon. He took me to the most incredible um, fish seafood restaurant on Sloane Avenue. Sadly, it's no longer there, but it was an incredible place. It was open for over 50 years and had um, it, it was incredible and a real treat to go there. Anyway, we walked in and all the staff knew him. He was obviously a big regular there. And he ordered, as we sat down, a dozen oysters. And I thought, holy moly, <laughs> great. So I had quite a few um, sips of my glass of champagne before the oysters arrived, um, thinking, oh gosh, how are we gonna tackle these? Anyway, I didn't want to look like an idiot. I wanted to look sophisticated and elegant and completely in control of this situation with this a mountain of oysters in front of me. Little, so I watch, watch and learn always. And he put lemon juice into Tabasco, so I thought that's a good idea, and I did that. Don't chew them would be my best advice. I didn't chew, just hold them in your mouth for a moment and then swallow in one. Nice and calm, don't make a fuss about it because you want to look elegant, calm, sophisticated, all of those things. So a little bit of lemon juice, a drop of Tabasco, and maybe mix it with a little fork, down it goes. Perfect. Anyway, I have loved, loved this q and I love your questions and thank you guys for listening and I hope you have a fabulous weekend.